G'day team, welcome back to Q Manufacturing. I'm Matt, that hasn't changed, and this is going to be the first video in a series about composite core materials. Specifically, this video is going to focus on basic bending stiffness concepts with a bit of an experiment that doesn't go quite as I expected. So basically, thickness makes things stiffer. This is a bit of a no-brainer. Pretty much everyone knows that at a relatively instinctive level. Today, I want to quantify what we all know instinctively, run through some theory, do some testing, and then look at some results. I figured it would be more fun than just making another customer part or even looking at a welder. Not many people seem to like that video. Beam bending theory was originally developed by Euler and helping him do this was Dan Bernoulli. Both seriously impressive people with lots of their work still in use right now. In around 1750, they had a night in the town, woke up with a hangover and realized they'd released a paper about beam theory, which it seems was largely ignored until the late 19th century when Monsieur Eiffel built his famous tower. With history done, it's on to physics. The resistance to bending for the beam is a function of the length the Young's modulus or material, and the moment of area or shape of the beam. We're going to fix the length and the material for this and focus on the moment of area by adjusting the distance between two skins. So how does the distance between two skins affect the moment of area? Well, first up, the moment of area for rectangular cross-section, a single skin, about this axis here, is defined as the width times the height cubed divided by 12. The height cubed is the dominant variable here and means small changes to this dimension can have big results. If you double the height, you're increasing the stiffness by eight times. If you double the width though, you only increase it by a factor of two. So why does this happen? That's a great question, and I probably had to answer that question at uni. But these days I could not give you a correct technical answer. I like to think about it this way. If you take a section of beam and look at the top and bottom elements and then bend the beam, the middle stays the same length, it's a kind of boring area, the top gets longer and the bottom gets shorter. The further apart these are, the more they have to stretch and therefore the stiffer the beam is. So back to our composite skin. It's a thin piece of composite material. In this case, it's glass because you guys don't pay me enough to waste carbon. It bends quite easily, but is quite strong in tension and compression when it doesn't buckle. We know from the theory that we just discussed, if you push it out from the center, it'll make everything stronger. So if we add another skin, we've doubled our thickness and got eight times the stiffness for double the weight. That's pretty awesome, but we can do better. What if we push the skins out with something that weighs almost nothing, but can still keep them bending like in our original picture? This is the general concept behind a composite sandwich structure. Pretend our original skins are half a mil thick each, from a total thickness of one mil with two skins. We can take this one millimeter section, split it into two skins, and put a three millimeter foam core in the center. That's four times the thickness, which should work out to be roughly 64 times as strong, right? Sadly, that's not the case. Even though the skins do most of the work, the center does a bit too. In this case, the foam core is much less stiff than the composite skin so it hardly takes any load and pretty much doesn't contribute any stiffness to the final product. Don't get me wrong, it plays its part by keeping the skins in place, but outside of that, it's kind of lazy. So to account for this, we can just pretend the foam doesn't exist for this calculation and work out what the full part would be, and then remove the foam's contribution from that, and bam, for the bit described above, we have 37 times the stiffness of the original part. That's pretty good considering the foam weighs around 5% of the same size piece of glass, in this case, we have a 15% weight increase for a 3,700% increase in stiffness. That's a pretty good trade-off if you ask me. Now let's look in an experiment. What we're going to do is take a flat piece of fiberglass with a known layoff, in this case, two layers at 090, and then chop it down into some sample pieces. From there, we're going to bond them to various thicknesses of foam using a glass microbead slurry and clamp it all in place to cure. The samples I'm making are a double skin a 3mm PVC foam with a density of 75kg per meter cubed, a 7mm polyurethane foam with a density of 75kg per meter cubed, and a 10mm polyurethane foam at 35kg per meter cubed. We'll then load each of the samples up with some weight and compare the projected stiffness to the actual stiffness. All right, ladies and gents, those parts have cured, and now it's time to do some measuring. Now you can see that we have our samples set up here, and another one is sitting right there in the jig at the moment. We have our run sheet ready to go with pre-ruled lines. We have our weights, that's uh, 500 grams in 50 gram increments. We have our other jigs, and then we have this whole setup here. So for testing setup, we have a sample that you can see, it's clamped down here, and um, that clamp is just a little bit undersized, so that the foam core will compress a little bit um, to provide that preload on the sample. Um, over here, we have our weight stack. The weights will hang off this little hook right here, and that's using one of these. So that'll just hang on into there and then pull down on the sample. We have a, a dial indicator, or it's an electronic dial indicator, uh, and that will give us our readings. We'll zero 
the whole thing out like this. So we'll turn it on. We'll zero it. Get it as close to zero as a go. And then we'll add our weights incrementally to see where it all ends up. So our first sample is two layers of the fiberglass. Each layer is 0.6 millimetres. So this is approximately 1.2 millimetres thick. I was going to use a 0.6 one by itself, but it turns out it couldn't actually support the loaded dial indicator because it's spring loaded. Let's put the first weight on. 50 grams. Here are the final results for the double skin. You can see that the projected deflection is actually more than the experimental results. It's an interesting outcome, but they don't vary too widely. Time for the 3mm PVC core now. I'll speed this up so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. You can see that the projected deflection is a fair amount less than what was experimentally measured. That's annoying, but I'm not overly concerned. So let's now have a look at the 7mm core. We're seeing big variances between the projected and experimental results. This part is actually deflecting more than the 3mm core and is over an order of magnitude worse than the projection. It's getting pretty bad. And now the variance gets even worse with the 10mm core. This part is actually deflecting more than both other cores and is almost two orders of magnitude worse than its projected results. You can see here the differences between the three, with the red line showing the bottom of the 3mm sample. Notice the position of the red line relative to the table doesn't change. So here we are, we zoomed in on the 10mm foam core, and we're just having a look at the clamped end. So what you can see at the top of the picture here, where that red is, that up there that's a skin, got a skin down here, and then this here is the core. I'm just going to draw a line. It's a different coloured marker. I'm going to use a red pen here. I'm going to draw a line straight down the centre. I'm going to try to draw a line straight down the centre. Okay, and then I'm going to apply some load to this. And watch what the core does. Do you see how much flex there is in that core there? So that core is actually not holding the skins apart rigidly, the whole thing is shifting. In fact, the whole thing is wiggling its way in and out. This whole experiment has led to some pretty interesting results. You could say that the experiment design is lacking with the ends open, only supported by the foam and no other link between the skins. But this has opened my eyes to the differences between PVC and PU foams and even the density differences in PU foam itself. Have a look at this chart of deflection per kilogram of load. The double skin was the closest to the predicted values and was actually stiffer. This is probably due to inaccuracies in the thickness of the skins or adhesive mixture adding thickness. Small changes on a small part have big relative stiffness effects. However, it was by far the least stiff with such a large deflection. The PVC was reasonably stiff and significantly stiffer than the double skin, though it was only one fifth of the predicted stiffness. And if that wasn't bad enough, from there it all went downhill. Not only was the 7mm PU foam less stiff than the 3mm PVC, but the 10mm PU foam was less stiff than both of them. Both of these PU foams were greater than an order of magnitude from their predicted stiffness. The simple, obvious and wrong conclusion is that some thickness is good, but more is worse. This experiment looks at pretty dire for the use of foam as a core material. However, these results don't mean foam is useless. If we weight normalize all these samples, we can get a clearer picture of the results. Regardless of the practical performance compared to theory, all of the foam core parts are stiffer per unit of mass, i.e. they have less deflection than plain fiberglass. This means that if you're trying to add stiffness to a panel, you're better off having a core in there than not having a core at all. 
So thickness does help. I strongly suspect that the open ends are playing a large role in this and changing core materials as well as thickness is confusing the issue. This experiment has further reinforced that composites are, as always, more complicated to predict performance for than metals. Just for interest, I bent the 7mm core sample until it failed. You can see here the core has a near textbook shear failure with the failure line running 45 degrees through the core. The foam is also torn along the skin, but this tear was contained to the foam alone and did not transfer to the adhesive. So where to from here? Well, I think I've proved the addition of some thickness improves stiffness. Yay for that. But at the same time, I've highlighted far more variances in foam core materials than I expected. As such, I think I'm going to have to redo this experiment and remove some of those variables. Next time, I'll use a constant thickness core and only vary the materials. This way, we'll be able to compare apples to apples. I think I'll also throw in another type of core material. I've got some aluminium honeycomb laying around, so I'll make a sample up with that too. And finally, I'll do some samples with a closed end on them to see how much a closed end changes the stiffness with the same core. So I hope you got something useful out of this. If you did, feel free to subscribe to my channel for the next instalment. And if you're really bored, check out my website with the vacuum bag connectors I designed for sale. The link's in the description below. Also down below are some useful links for foam core properties and composite material properties. I've found these useful and that's what I get my general design data off. See you next time.